Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. This is uh, the following week. I've turned the wax melter back on and I've turned the temperature up to near 150 degrees. And I've stirred it up once to well, melt some of the wax. So it's just above the point of the melting of the wax, but you can still see the middle parts are not entirely melted. So I'll stir this up again, but at the top, what you'll find right now is wax. This is all molted wax at the top and underneath that will be honey. Uh, and this honey will now have been cooked a little bit. So it's not gonna be sort of grade A honey. And there'll be lots of suspended things. So I'll have to uh, filter it out a bit. So I'll do the first filtering here to keep the major chunks out. And then I used to have an elbow on here, which made life so much easier. Uh, but this time what I'm gonna do is um, just be careful for now. So let's uh, set it up. Right now, this is all honey coming out. But there'll be little bits of molten wax droplets in here, little bits of uh, solids. So I'll be filtering this a second time once it's cooled down a little. Pretty confident it's still all honey, but we'll have a look. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is use a white tub here, and that'll tell me if I've got any wax in here. That's still all honey. That's still all honey. There's maybe the odd droplet of wax floating on the top.
wax will float on top of the honey and I'll be able to see it floating on here. If I see a significant amount, I can stop and I'm Easy way to demonstrate if we have wax in here. Wax will be floating on top. We take a cold hive tool. Actually, I don't see any wax here. Yeah, it still looks like all honey. This looks like honey. Slum gum, maybe the odd bit of wax now. Yes. See the wax on that. So we're into the wax now. So we're going to stop there. Give me a 
double down quite a bit. Pour this back in the top. We're going to separate that stuff out later. Taking the level down quite a bit, we're going to stir that up and break up that clump of wax and unmelted particles in there. There'll still be more honey to come. When that's broken up, it'll be a mixture of wax and honey. And we've got, oh, the best part of two full buckets. With this added to those, we've got probably 10, maybe 11 gallons of honey, which will be slightly burnt. Uh, so particularly dark, love a stronger flavor. You won't be able to sell that as normal honey, um, but there is a market for it, and some of my customers love it. So we're just going to stir this up and let things develop from there. Another day to go. break up those lumps. The mirror will be being ready. So it'll melt up, melt faster. So it's just cappings consolidated into a big lump now with melted on the outside edges. Another day entirely melted, especially if I stir it up a couple of times in the next day or so. heat up a little bit and we're just going to try and it's now entirely melted as far as I can see so now we will remove some Temperature up, honey is even darker now.
topped up with a lot of slum gum now. Slum gum is basically this stuff. This is things like the dirt, the propolis, the pupil casings, that sort of thing. Going through the, it's suspended in the wax, in the honey and wax. You can see there's bits of floating wax in there. When this is cooled down, this because the bucket is cool from overnight, and uh, that the wax then solidifies. So we'll pass it instead of through this sort of millimeter mesh to get the big bits out. We'll then pass it through a fine honey mesh to make it suitable for human consumption. Get out the bits, and uh, let's say it's a uh, now a dark cooked honey so not the same sort of thing and what we have here is wax floating on some honey and some gum there we are <laughs> ouch we now have the wax layer. Helps to remember which way to turn the valve to turn it off. Okay, now that we've cleared this out, we're gonna try and get fairly clean wax out of here. So the dark brown stuff, Again, this is where the valve would really help. The dark brown stuff is the honey. And the bright yellow stuff is the wax. So you can see, let's go on here. See how the wax floats on top of the brown stuff there. The brown stuff is the burnt honey and the clean wax. And we're catching any of the slum gum there. A little further to the left. Sure. Thank you. Oh, now I won't be worried about everything falling inside. So if we wait too long, the, honey, the wax will come out very dark. Because the wax will get darker the longer it's cooked as well. But because we're melting it fairly quickly, it's only been 24 hours. And then pouring it, we'll end up with cream, cream yellow wax like this, as opposed to dirty looking wax like that. That's been cooked for a good while. That's why it's so dark. Still perfectly usable on things like frames and stuff. Now, a nice clean container there full of wax. It's probably 10 pounds of wax there. Good to give or take. And what we're going to do is carefully pour it into these tins. I've got baking tins here just to help them come out of the tins I've got some silicon spray which will help it not stick to the tins when 
really cool they'll pop right out Megan would you mind doing some camera work for me okay the camera is just there if you grab the camera you can show this sort of pouring in okay so Megan's helping with more than just extracting honey what I'm going to do these will be roughly two pound blocks roughly I'm not trying to do anything specific but what I'm doing this way is only pouring the stuff off at the top and you'll see when I get closer with this next one if you hold it up high you can see the dark stuff inside so we're just going to make sure that we don't accidentally pour the dark stuff in and we're just getting pure wax so these are two pound blocks i'm going to do a few smaller ones it's very handy to have ones that you can break very easily so i'll do a couple of shallow ones now it's hard to get it all exactly right i don't want to pour this dark stuff into there because it'll just leave bits of honey stuck at the bottom of the little slabs of wax so what i'm going to do here if you just follow me Megan, i'm just going to pour it straight back in and then we can do some more still getting honey we're still in the honey layer but also the waxy layer the longer we do it the less honey will come out the more wax will pour off until it starts to block up with the slum gun So easy to separate by just pouring it at different clean wax just pour off the dirty stuff and you can do this at home on a small much smaller scale this is the way you separate it out that'll do for now and pour a bit more pour a few more big ones down So we'll do more of that. Thank you, Megan. Take a bow. <laughs> okay, so you can see the wax is cooling down here into nice size bricks. And doesn't matter what you put them in, loaf tins are quite handy. 
Uh, I've got a few shallow ones because these are e nice to break off a few. Have some shallow ones that are easy to break into pieces. It's great for making things like lip balms and hand creams and things. It makes it easy to weigh it out. Breaking up a two pound block is harder work. So what we'll do is we'll pour more out. Um, I can pour another couple of pounds and then I'm going to run out of tins or I can do it in the blocks. Those, uh, I've got a few of those plastic tubs as well. I think I'll do it in the tins. It'll only take an hour or so before these are cool enough to tip out. And then I can do some more little blocks of gold. Beautiful stuff. It smells so good. Still honey. So it's blocking up with a bit of wax. It's just easier when you do it straight away when it's still hot and melted. But it's getting it melting its way through now. When you get it blocking like that with slum gum and things, you gotta be careful. That's where the doll pointing down. But the elbow pointing down is so much better and safer and you don't get it all over the floor like I did over there. This stuff can just go back in there, get remelted, and uh, put into molds.
not bad. Let's get some more. Locked up with wax, but once it's got the hot stuff running through it, it starts to melt it. A bit of dark honey out first.
So we've got these blocks of gold and a whole lot more coming. That's roughly so far two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. We've got 38 to 40 pounds out so far. And we've still got a fair amount of liquid in there. I'd say we'll get another 10 pounds or more out of here yet. So there we go, blocks of gold out of all that scrap, cappings and honey, and uh, 10 or 20 gallons of uh, honey to boot. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Follow up next time to see how we finish this process.